Hel Hello, and welcome to the World of Truth, our cable show that's designed to help you better understand your Bible. My name is Frank, and I'll be your teacher for today, and reading for me today will be Brother Dwayne from the House of Jacob Bible Study class. Uh, the title of today's lesson is, The True Israelites Are Dark-Skinned People. Brothers and sisters, the Bible is not only a book of prophecy, promises, and things of that like that, but it's also a history book. It tells the history of a people. It's also the history of the world as we know it. We're going to start this lesson out and try to identify who the Israelites of the Bible are. We're going to start this lesson out in Genesis 1 and 1. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So God is the arbiter of all that's done here, brothers and sisters. God created everything. Let's go to Amos chapter 2. Amos chapter 2. Now we're going to, this, this whole lesson is designed to identify who the Israelites of the Bible are, brothers and sisters. Amos chapter 2, and when you get, to, get there, brother, pick it up at verse 10. Amos chapter 2 and verse 10. Go ahead. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorites. And I raised up your sons for prophets and your young men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? That's but good. That's good. That's good. So right here, the Lord is saying he's giving them a description of when he brought them out of Egypt and how he raised up their children for Nazareth. We're going to go back and take a look at when he did this. Let's go to Exodus chapter 19 and pick it up at verse 4. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 4. Read. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you in unto myself. So what the Lord is doing here is he's describing to them what took place when the children of Israel, when the children of Israel were enslaved to the Egyptians, brothers and sisters. They were enslaved for over 400 years to the Egyptians. Then the Lord, he, uh, he uh, committed Moses, he committed Moses to bring the children of Israel out of slavery. And now the Lord is just reminding them here of what he did, how he plagued the children of Egypt and how he brought them out on eagle's wings. Go ahead. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Understand what he just said there, brothers and sisters. He said a distinct difference between the children of Israel and the rest of the people, brothers and sisters. It's not, it's not that the Israelites were so much better. It's, it's just that the Lord, he had... He had he had put his spirit upon this people. He says here, now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. What is a covenant, brothers and sisters? A covenant is a contract, brothers and sisters. That means I'm going to do something for you if you do something for me. If you do what I ask you to do, then I'm going to give you X amount of payment. You understand? It's a contract, brothers and sisters. So he had entered into a contract with the children of Israel. Go ahead. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy oh, nation. Oh, wait a minute. If you keep my covenant, you will be a kingdom of priests. Go ahead. And in holy nation. And in holy nation. Go ahead. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elder of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. They signed the contract. Yes, sir. They signed the contract. We will keep that covenant. We will be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We have signed this contract with you, our God. Go ahead. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. 
and Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. That's good. That's good. Let's go on to Romans chapter 3. So they signed this contract with God. This contract, brothers and sisters, is etched in stone. The Lord does not break covenant. He does not break contracts, brothers and sisters. Man, man breaks contracts. Before the ink is dry, they'll change their mind and try something different. But God, when he makes a contract with you, it is etched in stone. Romans chapter 3. And pick it up, brother, at verse 1. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For Paul, what Paul is saying right here, Paul is saying right here, what advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? much every way because chiefly we were given the oracles of God we just read that back in Exodus 19 and, and 4 when it said when they said all that the Lord has said we will do they signed the contract they signed the contract the Lord gave us all of his oracles statutes and judgments and what we were supposed to do as a kingdom of priests we were supposed to teach them to the other children of, uh, uh, of the world brothers and sisters we were supposed to teach the other brothers and sisters of the world what thus saith the Lord. That was the contract. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Romans chapter 11. Pick it up at verse 1. Romans chapter 11. We're just tracking down, brothers and sisters, the true Israelites of the Bible. We're going to let the Bible interpret itself here. We're going to let the Bible interpret itself. Romans chapter 11, pick it up, my brother, at verse 1. Go ahead. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Paul is telling these people that physically he is an Israelite of the tribe of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So he was a Benjamite. He was an Israelite who was of the tribe of Benjamin. That's physical, brothers and sisters. Physically, he was an Israelite. Go ahead. God have not cast away his people which he foreknew. Because some folks were saying, or they still say today, that the church was taken from the Israelites and it was given to the Gentiles. I believe they say it's over there in Acts 2 when the church was changed. You understand? And, and it, was given, it was given to the Gentiles. But we're going to see, brothers and sisters, that that did not happen. That's not true. Go ahead. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elijah, how he maketh intercessions to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. The Lord is saying, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed down themselves to the image of Baal. So I still have a remnant of people that have not served false gods, brothers and sisters. And the, God, and the Lord still has a remnant, brothers and sisters, that are not serving false gods today. And you're looking at them right here and now, brothers and sisters. This church, we do not follow anything other than the scriptures in this Bible, brothers and sisters. No false images, no false idols. We have the true and living God right here, brothers and sisters. Continue. Verse 5. Even so, then, at this present time, also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I just told you, there's a remnant, and that remnant is here, brothers and sisters, according to the election of grace. It ain't nothing that we did on our own. This is the Lord operating this. He said he reserved to himself a remnant. There has to be a remnant, brothers and sisters. There has to be a remnant, because as the world stands now, the whole world is wicked. The whole world is wicked. So the Lord has reserved the people, a remnant of his people, that have the true and living God, the words of God, brothers and sisters. The truth must be told. 
Read. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more of grace. Otherwise, works is no more work. Read. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. And the, and, 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 and the election is here, and the rest are blinded. And we know they blinded, brothers and sisters, because, because they haven't even read up to uh, Genesis chapter 2. They don't even know what day the Sabbath day is on, brothers and sisters. So they are blinded. They're blinded. They'll tell you that Jesus died on Good Friday and rose early Easter Sunday morning, brothers and sisters. And Jesus himself said, I'll, I'll be in the grave three days and three nights. You understand? And you can't get three days and three nights from Good Friday until Easter Sunday morning. So they blinded, brothers and sisters. Where you stop at, brother? End of seven. Read. According as it is written, God have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this day. Unto this very day, brothers and sisters, unto this very day. You just watch now. Every Sunday, S-U-N day, the churches be full, brothers and sisters, but on God's Sabbath day, which is the seventh day, you just got a little spattering, a little scattering of folks. You understand what I'm saying? Broad is the way to destruction, brothers and sisters. And narrow is the way to salvation. Let's move on a little bit further. Skip down to verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. So Paul is speaking to the Gentiles here. Read. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. Go ahead. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? So Israel was cast away for a while, brothers and sisters. Why? Because they broke God's covenant, brothers and sisters. Read. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Who is the first fruit, brothers and sisters? That's Jesus yes, Christ. First fruit. Read. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And, and who, are, who, are, who are the roots? That's Jesus as well. That's, that's the Israelites. Go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. You see what was happening here, brothers and sisters? These Gentiles were already disclaiming the Israelites, brothers and sisters. They were always, they were already saying that they were that they were the true church and that the Israelites were cast away. But Paul here is trying to tell them that they were just grafted in. You were grafted in. You aren't the true church. The Israelites are the true church. You understand? So let's let's go on. Let's skip down to verse 25, brother, and continue. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Don't be wise in your own conceits because you were grafted in, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Bl that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And when will the fullness of the Gentiles be come in? When Jesus returned, brother. Go ahead. And so all Israel shall be saved. All as, Israel shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. Read. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Who is this deliverer that's coming out of Zion, brothers and sisters? That's Jesus. Yes, Read. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election... They are beloved for the Father's sake. So the Lord has still preserved himself a remnant, brothers and sisters. He still has an election of people, brothers and sisters, that are teaching his true and living word, brothers and sisters. Somebody has to say what thus saith the Lord. Somebody has to tell you what God is saying, brothers and sisters. Somebody has to interpret this Bible according to the way the Bible is written. Because usually what you get in the world, in the world churches today, brothers and sisters, is their opinion. Their opinions. And see, opinions are, opinions are like this, brothers and sisters. Everyone has one of those. But the, but the Bible is the true and living word of God. 
it will interpret itself. You just read it. There's no way on, the wor- uh, on this earth that I can give you the first part of the first verse and then you understand what thus said the Lord, brothers and sisters. The scripture says, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You understand? That's the way you read your Bible. First part of the first verse won't get you out that door, brothers and sisters, no less into the kingdom of God. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Genesis chapter uh, 17. We're trying to identify who the Israelites of this Bible are, brothers and sisters. I'm going to suggest to you, this is a short lesson, brothers and sisters. Come out to the house of Jacob, and we do full lessons on everything that we teach up here in these hour classes We have full lessons on them where you can get even more understanding. And that's what you need. Scriptures say, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, brothers and sisters. You need knowledge to get into the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. That's what you need, knowledge. That's why we give it to you out of the book. Genesis chapter 17, pick it up, my brother, at verse 4. As for me... Behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So the Lord is talking to Abraham here. He's talking to Abraham, and he told him, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. A father of many nations. Go ahead. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. That's what, that's what Abraham means, a father of many nations. Go ahead. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. That's a promise there, ain't it, brothers and sisters? That's a promise. He says, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. What is the land of Canaan, brothers and sisters? That's the land of Israel over there. That's the land of Israel. What's going on in the land of Israel right now, brothers and sisters? You got war. You got insurrection. You got war going on over there, brothers and sisters. There's a controversy over Zion, brothers and sisters. The people that's that are in there, the Edomites that are in the land right now, they saying that it's their land. The Ishmaelites, commonly called the Arabs, they're saying that it's their land, and they fighting over it. The true Israelites that aren't in their land, we know that that's our land. So there's a controversy going on over that land. That's why there's so much, so much fighting going on about that land, brothers and sisters. If the Arabs said, we don't want this land anymore, the fighting will stop. If the Edomites said, the Israelis said, we don't want this land anymore, the the fighting will stop, brothers and sisters. There's a controversy about that land. Let's go on to, uh, let's move on to uh, Genesis chapter 25. We're just trying to identify who the Israelites are of the Bible, brothers and sisters. Now, Abraham had a son. He had a son named Ishmael, and I just talked about Ishmael. Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. He also had a son named Isaac, who the Lord continued his covenant with. So we're going to look at the generations of Isaac. Pick it up, brother, at Genesis 25 and verse 19. Go ahead. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister of Laban, 
the Syrians. I'm going to explain a little something right here. Now, now, Laban, Laban, I mean, uh, Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. What this is meaning, brothers, these were Israelites that were in the land of Syria. You understand what I'm saying? I want you to understand this, that these people were Israelites that were in other lands, just like we are Israelites that are in America today. You have Israelites that have been scattered throughout the whole world, brothers and sisters. So I'm an Israelite that happens to live in America. These, these brothers here were Israelites that happened to be living in Syria at the time. So they're not Syrians, they're Israelites. I, I need you to understand that. Go ahead. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Three. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb. Two nations are in thy womb. Two nations, two distinct, separate types, characteristics of people are in thy womb. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated from thy bow, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The, the, the blessing, the inheritance went to the elder. So why is it here? Why is it here? that the elder is serving the younger. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now there's a description there, brothers and sisters. There's a color involved with that. They said Esau was a red person. Go ahead. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And Hold the on. Good. Now, there was no description or color uh, 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 given for Jacob, brothers and sisters. No color. That's why we're going to let the Bible interpret itself so that you can understand what color Jacob was. That's why I, I titled this lesson, The True Israelites are dark-skinned people. Now, he gave a description of Esau, Jacob's twin brother. So we're going to track this down, brothers and sisters, so that we can determine what color was Jacob. Let's move on a little bit further. You stop at uh, 26? Stop at 28. Skip down to yes. verse 31, Stop brother. 26. Skip down to verse 31. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold. That's I am what I was talking about, brothers and sisters. The birthright <laughs> went to the elder, brothers and sisters. Whoever was, whoever was first born, they got the birthright. But watch what's taking place here. Go ahead. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And rough, what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Understand something, brothers and sisters. What the world normally says about this depiction right here is that Jacob stole Esau's birthright. What does this say? Read that 33 again, brother. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. He sold it. He didn't steal it. He sold his birthright. Read. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. They entered into a contract, brothers and sisters. The contract was, sell me your birthright, and I'll give you this bowl of beans. He sold him his birthright. He gave him the bowl of beans. Contract sealed. Case closed. Just that simple. He sold it for a bowl of beans. Now, you can, you can go and you can cry about it all you want, but you entered into a contract. Be a man. Keep your part of the contract. You sold it. Don't cry. Let's move on. Man up. Let's go into, uh, let's go into uh, Genesis chapter 35. 
He sold it for a bowl of beans. Jacob did not steal the birthright. And, and you false prophets out there, y'all need to read that and stop lying about that, little, that description right there. Because, because what you do is you're misleading the people. You're misleading the people. It says sold, S-O-L-D, not stole, S-T-O-L-E. Teach the people right, brothers and sisters. Teach them right. Brothers, I mean. Teach the people right. Genesis 35, pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he, was, when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. So the Lord changed Jacob's name to Israel. Now, out of, out, of, out of Israel came these 12 tribes. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. Everybody's heard of the 12 tribes of Israel, even though you might not have a clue what that means. Everybody's heard of it at least once in their lifetime, I'm pretty sure. Genesis chapter 49, and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So he's, he's about ready to pass on, and he's giving his, his sons their blessings and telling them what's going to befall them in the last days. Read. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Skip down to verse 28, brother. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. So he went on to give them all their blessings. He named them individually, and he told them what was going to happen to them and, and what their blessing was going to be. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. Continue. And this is it, that their father spake unto them and blessed them. Everyone according to his blessing, he blessed them. Let's, let's move on to uh, Genesis chapter 36. We're tracking down. Jacob's color, brothers and sisters. The title of the lesson is The True Israelites Are a Dark Skinned People. Genesis chapter 36. Now, they, uh, uh, Isaac's wife had twins. She had twins. She had Jacob and she had Esau. So we just tracked down the lineage of Jacob. Let's track down, let's track down the lineage of Esau. Genesis 36, pick it up at verse 8. Go ahead, brother. Thus dwell Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Esau is also called Edom, brothers and sisters. He's also called T-Man. He's also called Mount Seir. Read. And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. And Mount Seir. Okay, let's move on a little bit further. Exodus chapter 2. Now we're going to go, brothers and sisters, and we're going to start to looking at some color. We're going to start to looking at some color. Exodus chapter 2. Everybody knows that the ancient Egyptians were dark-skinned people. Everybody knows that, brothers and sisters. Exodus chapter 2. And pick it up at verse 15. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Now Moses, Moses knew that he was an Israelite, brothers and sisters. He knew it all the time. As a matter of fact, he had, he had been nursed by his own mother, you understand? Because his sister asked, asked Pharaoh's daughter, do you want me to go get somebody to nurse the child? So she went and got her mother and brought her back to Pharaoh to nurse Moses. God is awesome, brothers and yes, sisters. Sir. He's awesome. You understand what I'm saying? So Moses knew that he was an Israelite. What had happened here was Moses saw an Egyptian beating one of his brothers an Israelite, and what he did was he killed him and buried him in the sand. You understand? So now this thing is beginning to be known. Go ahead. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh 
and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. So Pharaoh was seeking to kill him, so he fled Egypt, and he ran, he, he, uh, he, he fled to the land of Midian. Go ahead. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They said, An Egyptian delivered us. So Moses, the Israelite, looked like an Egyptian. Yes, sir. Which the whole world knows that the ancient Egyptians were a dark race of people. So Moses, the Israelite, was mistaken for an Egyptian. Go ahead. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Let's go back to, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Just a little reminder here, brothers and sisters, of what's taking place. You understand? Remember that there was a contract, there was a contract made here. There was a contract made. All that the Lord has said, we will do. And then other scriptures said, we will do and be yeah. obedient. Let's go and take another look at the contract. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4 and pick it up at verse 1. Read. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which this I command you. This is when they you. was getting ready to go into the land of Canaan. Go ahead. Neither shall ye diminish aught from it. In other words, don't add anything to the word and don't diminish anything from it. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to suggest to you right now that that's what we have going on in, in the world's churches today. They diminish the word and then they add stuff to it that's not in here, brothers and sisters. That's how the people are being deceived, brothers and sisters. He's telling you right here, don't add anything to this and don't take nothing away from it. And what do you get, brothers and sisters? You get the first part of the first verse and then all, a whole bunch of opinion about stuff that don't even relate to the first part of the first verse that you just heard. Adding stuff to it and diminishing stuff from it. That's how the world has gone so wicked to this very moment, brothers and sisters. That's how the world has gone so wicked. Continue, brother. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. Baal Peor, that was a, pag that was a pagan deity. That was a sun god, S-U-N god. The same one that they still serve him today, brothers and sisters, the God of the sun, S-U-N. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted because it's the same thing. Read. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. You understand what the Lord is telling them here? He says, Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear these, all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. This is the spirit of the Lord upon the people that he has that he has committed, that he has commanded that they should teach the rest of the children of God what thus saith the Lord. It happened back over in Exodus chapter 19. He said, you should become a, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. So he's going to put all this wisdom on us so that we can tell the rest of the world what thus saith the Lord. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Did we do what we were supposed to do? Uh-uh. Answer that right now. No, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. That's why we're sitting in a foreign land right now, brothers and sisters. 
That's why you are sitting wherever you sitting and listening and listening to, to my voice. You are not in the land of Israel, your home, your land. You are not there. Deuteronomy 31 and pick it up at verse 8, brother. Go ahead. And the Lord, he, is, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, at the end of every seven years, in a, solemn, in, a solemn, in a solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles. Skip down, skip down to verse uh, 15, brother, and continue. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle in a pillar of the cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and his people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whether they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I, will for, and, well, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them. Brother, and, skip over the verse, skip over to chapter 32, and pick it up at verse 8. Read. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For Do you understand, brothers and sisters, what's just taking place right here? When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. How many, how many, how many tribes was there in Israel? There was 12, right? Don't you have 12 months during the day, uh, 12 hours during the day and 12 hours at night? Don't you have 12 months in the year? He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. You understand what I'm saying? It's evident. It's, it's out there. This is a natural thing that takes place that you never even pay, anything, pay any attention to. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the tribes of, the 12, uh, of, of Israel. Read. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. You are the lot of his inheritance. Read, brother. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Boy, that's, that's, that's some high stature right there, brothers and sisters. When you are the apple of the Lord's eye. Any, any, any little brother out here, he knows that knows anything about the apple tree. If you have, if you walking in an orchard and you see an apple, this big juicy shiny apple, you are gonna climb that tree to get that apple because you you got apples that are on other limbs and things, but that particular apple, it just looks like it's the most juicy and gorgeous apple on the tree, and you climb it to get it. He kept Israel as the apple of his eye, brothers and sisters. He set he set them above the other children's of God, brothers and sisters. He made a, a kingdom of priests, a holy nation out of Israel, brothers and sisters. Ain't nothing we did on our own. The Lord did this, brothers and sisters. Of course, we blew the mission, as, we, as you're going to see right now. Uh, skip down to verse uh, 15, brother. Read. But Jeshurun waxed fat. Jeshurun, just another name for Israel. Read. And kicked. Thou art waxing fat. You done waxed fat, brothers and sisters. You understand? Go ahead. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. You understand, brothers and sisters? Remember now, all that the Lord has said we will do. All that the Lord has said we will do. But what happens here, brothers and sisters? They, then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. So now they serving strange gods, brothers and sisters, not the God of Israel. Read. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. So so the Israelites 
forgot that contract that they were under, brothers and sisters. They forgot the covenant. They forgot the God that formed them, brothers and sisters. They broke the contract, brothers and sisters. Let's move on a little bit further. Now we're trying to identify the color. We're trying to, let's go to Acts chapter 21. We're trying to identify what color Jacob was. Acts 21. Give me a second to get over there, brother. Acts 21, and pick it up at verse 37. Acts 21 and verse 37. When you get it, brother, go ahead. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Paul had gotten arrested here, brothers and sisters. And he's, he's, asking, he's asking his captors, can he speak unto the people? Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian? Wait with a minute. Wait a minute. So Paul, the Israelite, he looked like an Egyptian? Yes, he did. And everybody knows that the Egyptians are a dark race of people, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian, which before these days made us an uproar? and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that would murder us. But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. Oh, no, I'm not an Egyptian. I'm a Jew. Read. A city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. Let's move on a little bit further. So Paul said, I am, a, a, I am an Israelite, a Jew. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Pick it up at verse 1. Now, this is Paul. This is Paul. And, and, and these are some of the people that, that were in his, uh, in his little troop there. Go ahead. 13 and 1. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. Simeon that was called Niger. Niger means black brothers and sisters. So Simeon was black, go ahead. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manion, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. That's good, that's good. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2 and pick it up. At verse 13, Matthew chapter 2, and pick it up at verse 13. I hope, brothers and sisters, you begin to see that these Israelites, the Israelites of the Bible, are a dark-skinned people. Not the people that are over there in the land today that caused them. They don't even call themselves Israelites. They call themselves Israelis. I, wait, wait. I haven't seen Israeli nowhere in the book. I've seen Israelite, but no Israeli. The Lord won't even allow them to call themselves Israelites. You understand what I'm saying? They call themselves Israelis. The book says Israelite. There's a disconnect there. Yes, sir. You understand? There's a disconnect there. It's not coming out of the scripture. You understand? If you're the people of the Bible, then you're supposed to be Israelites. There is no Israeli in here. Move on a little bit further. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 13. Now, this is, this is after the Lord had been born, and, 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 and the angel of the Lord is warning Joseph and Mary, that, that Herod, the Tetrarch, is getting ready to start. He's going to attempt to kill the baby Jesus. So the Lord is warning them to take him down into another land. Pick it up, brother, and read verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Whoa! Arise and take the young child and flee into Egypt. If, if, 
if Jesus is a Gentile with blonde hair and blue eyes, if he is fleeing into the land of Egypt where you have a dark-skinned people, brothers and sisters, he will stand out like a sore thumb. You ever seen one Gentile person standing in a crowd of Israelites, brothers and sisters? There he is, there he is right there. Uh, it ain't no problem. I got him. I got him. There he is. There he is. He just as easy to see as a sore thumb, brothers and sisters. So what had happened here was the Lord is sending the baby Jesus into a group of people that look like himself so that they can hide. Why would he send a dark-skinned person into a, a, into a land of, 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 of a bunch of light-skinned people? Makes no sense. Makes no sense, brothers and sisters. Read. And be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod would seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And they went into Egypt where they just blended in with the rest of the people, brothers and sisters. You understand? If, if, if they have a different type of garb, when you come through, you go through, you go through, the, uh, 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 go through and buy you some new clothing, you understand? You just put on whatever the other people are wearing. Read. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Read. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth, and slew all the children that went Bethlehem, and in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Understand what's happening right there, brothers and sisters. Do you see what just took place? He destroyed the children from two years old and under, brothers and sisters. So, so this scripture is talking about at least two years. The child was at least two years old because that's what made Herod kill two-year-old babies. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I'm, I'm going to skip on. I'm going to move on with that. I was going to talk a little bit about that scene that you always see in the mangers, brothers and sisters. You understand? That, uh, that's just not scripturally, you know, read. Verse 17. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. And not, would not be comforted for, because they were not. This same, this same scenario, brothers and sisters, took place when Moses was born. The same thing happened when Moses was born, brothers and sisters. That's why they put him in the little ark and they, they, they put him in the Nile and he floated down the Nile River because, because Pharaoh was try, attempting to kill the children uh, the is Hebrew Israelites back then, brothers and sisters, same thing took place at the birth of Jesus. Let's move on to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Understand, brothers and sisters, that the Lord God intends for everybody to have salvation, brothers and sisters. Everybody to have salvation. But he sets the protocol, not man. He does it according to the way he wants to do it, not according to the way that man thinks that it should be done. God is a God of order, brothers and sisters. Isaiah chapter 5, and pick it up at verse 1, brothers. Go ahead, brother. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Who is this vineyard? It's the children of Israel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. If you, if, you, if you plant the choicest vines, brothers and sisters, if you plant the best grapes that are out there, 
you would have supposed that when the grapes grew up or when the grapes grew on the vine, that those would be the best grapes. But the Lord is telling you here that these vines brought forth wild grapes. The wild grapes, brothers and sisters, we read about over there in Deuteronomy chapter 32, just round wax fat and kick. You understand? They forsook God. Go ahead. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. Read. And now go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor dig, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. You see that, brothers and sisters? The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Go ahead. And the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. And for righteousness, but behold, a cry. He looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. It said, just round wax fat and kick, brothers and sisters. They forsook God that made them and went and started serving other gods. So the Lord took his hedge from around them. And then they started to being eaten up by all these false prophets and false doctrines that are out here, brothers and sisters. And that's why the world is so wicked this very day. Let's go to Song of Solomon, verse 1. Song of Solomon, verse 1. And we're going to pick it up at Song of Solomon, verse 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse, chapter 1, I mean, in verse 1. Go ahead, brother. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Because of the savor of thy good ointment, thy name is as ointment poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love what thee. What is this ointment? This ointment is the word of God, brothers and sisters. This ointment is the word of God. Go ahead. Draw me. We will run after thee. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. The upright love thee. I am black, but calmly, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. What we just read right there, brothers and sisters, is a description of the Lord God. Go ahead. Look not upon me, because I am black. Because the sun have looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. But my own vineyard have I not kept. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock. That's good, brother. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. The Lord, the Lord there is telling you that... His, his mother's children made him the keeper of the vineyard. And he's telling them that his own vineyard he's not kept. Didn't he say he was going to take his heads away from around him? Because just round wax fat and kick. Let's, let's move on to Daniel chapter 7 and pick it up at verse 9, brother. Go ahead. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Wait a minute. This God, this God, the ancient of days, did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Go ahead. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. That sounds like dog skin to me. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 12. When you get there, brother, go ahead and read. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, and as his if... his feet like unto fine brass, brothers and sisters, dark skin, go ahead. As if they burned it in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. That's good. Let's move on to Deuteronomy chapter 28. 
Brothers and sisters, if you haven't believed anything that I've read to you thus far, I want you to take a look at this because the Lord God, he set down in Deuteronomy 28 some conditions. These are natural conditions that will be upon the children of Israel. First off, in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1, he talked about the blessings. From 1 to 15, he talked about the blessings that he was going to give you. But in Deuteronomy 28 and 15, read, brother. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee Skip and overtake thee. 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, and all that thou settest thine hand unto, for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Skip down to verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind groweth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Skip down to verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3. When you get it, brother, go ahead and read that third verse. He's saying, no man shall buy you. Joel chapter 3 and verse 3. Read, brother. And they have cast lots for my people. They have cast lots for my people. They set them up on a box, brothers and sisters, and they cast lots for them. I got a fine buck here. He seems to be about the age of 20 to 25. He's strong and muscular. He's good for the field and good for the maidens. We can sell him for such and such a price, such and such a price, I'll accept the price. They cast lots for the people read. And I've given a boy for an harlot. And if and if, if I was a slave owner and I didn't have no money and I wanted to, we were, we were a medium of ex exchange, brothers and sisters, go ahead and read. And sold a girl for wine that they might drink. And sold a girl, given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Brothers and sisters, y'all know who that happened to. So I'm telling you that the black, the black man in America is the true Israelites of the Bible, brothers and sisters, and thank you.